Hey, good morning, Jumpstart Nation. It is good to be with you this morning, and I've got my cup of coffee going on with my Christmas mug. You can tell that right there, good tidings of comfort and joy. So I'm ready to go this morning. And what is your favorite Christmas song? That's our uh, activity for this morning while people are jumping on to Jumpstart. And I just want to know what is your favorite Christmas song? Now, mine is Oh Holy Night. Uh, a couple of ladies at our church several years ago and I did a trio of Oh Holy Night. And it was just so, so, so wonderful. And I just love that song. So I'm actually going to be playing that on piano for our Christmas Day service during our communion. We're serving communion on our Christmas Day service, and I'm going to be playing Silent Night and Oh Holy Night, and then we are going to have uh, the, the story of the birth of Jesus out of Luke, and we are going to have um, candlelight service. And we are going to have just a wonderful time and spend an hour together as a family of the body of Christ. And it is on Christmas Day from 10 to 11 at Victory. So if you are local, please join us for that. I am not sure if it's going to go live, but we just might do that. So I am sharing this again, my little picture of my mug. Let me see if I can get it on there the right way. There we go. Good tidings of comfort and joy. So that's what I wish you for this Christmas. And I wanted to go back to a couple of weeks ago when I did a lesson that we revisited a couple of weeks ago called Scripture Rich and Doubt Poor. So I think this will really help us once again in understanding the power of our words. I know Pastor has been talking about the imagination. He's been talking about the fourth dimension and how we can see things in the Spirit. You know, to walk by faith and not by sight depends on what you're looking at. Now, I know the scriptures say that we walk by faith and not by sight, and that is so true. If we are walking by our natural sight, then we have to, to override that with our faith. But if we are looking at the spiritual eyes that we have and seeing into the spirit, and seeing all the things that God has provided for us, then we are walking by faith by uh, looking into the spirit of man, but it's not like walking in faith to override all the negativity and the, neg and the negative sight and the normal sight that we see, because what we're doing when we're speaking, we're walking by faith in the spiritual, in the supernatural, then we are allowing our imagination to use um, the faith of God to actually see into the Spirit. So we still walk by faith and not by sight, but we also need to make sure that we're looking at the right things. So this morning, I want to talk about Scripture rich and doubt poor. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about how God breathed into man and made him a living soul. But we also found out that that meant a speaking spirit. So our mouth is so valuable that even in Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says that we are to confess Jesus as Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead. Well, we have to speak it out. And then we believe that God raised him from the dead and the word of God tells us that we will be saved. So our words are very powerful. And we have to be cautious, not, not full of care, not full of fear, but we need to be cautious and, and just alert. How about that? We need to be alert to the power of our words, what we're thinking about, and what we're allowing our mouth to say. Proverbs 12, 18 says that there is that speaks like the piercings of a sword. We've all either done that or had that done to us. Words that have pierced like a sword, either to us or from us. But it says, but the tongue of the wise is health. So many times we actually talk ourselves into being sick. If we're grumbling and complaining, 
And off and on, I've had to really deal with that of grumbling and complaining about things. And you know what? When I do, I don't feel so good. It's because I am allowing that griping and complaining to not only be in my thoughts, but it comes out of my mouth and then it establishes it in my life. And I don't like that. I don't want to be a grumpy person. I don't want to always see the negative. So I have to hold myself accountable for what comes out of my mouth. Now, another one is Proverbs 15, 2. It says, the tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright. You use knowledge well, but the mouth of fools pours out foolishness. So I want to make sure that my tongue is the tongue of the wise. Now, how can I do that? And our, our topic is, you know, that we are going to be scripture rich and doubt poor. So how do I establish scriptures in my life? Well, the first way of doing it is acknowledge that the word of God is the inspired word of God. So let's go over to Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 and 17. We've gone to this scripture quite a lot. In fact, all of us probably should have it memorized by now. But it says in 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Now, that's the one I really like. That the man of God may be perfect or mature or growing, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So we see that we need to be scripture rich. And when we're scripture rich, then we're starting to like Philemon chapter, well, chapter, it only has chapter one in it, but in Philemon verse six says that the communication of our faith may become effective. How? By acknowledging everything that is in us that is in Christ. So if you went to Philemon verse six, only has one chapter, that our faith becomes effective by acknowledging everything that we have in us that is in Christ Jesus. So when we begin to see who we are and where our identity lies in Christ, and it lies in the scriptures, and we find out who we are in him, we're identified with Christ, then we're not going to have an identity crisis. We're not going to have an identity problem. And I think that's really what's happening around us now is everybody's talking about, well, I identify as this, or I identify as that, or I feel like I'm like this, and I'm this kind of person. I'm not really the person that I was when I was born. There's a lot of confusion. And the reason that there's confusion is they don't have a solid identity of who they are in Christ. And all of us have to grow in that. It's not just like we wake up as a Christian one morning and we just know who we are in Christ. It's a learning process. This verse over in 2 Timothy talks about being perfect or mature and, and thoroughly furnished. How? Because we know that the scriptures are going to help us for doctrine or teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. So how does that work when we want to be scripture rich and doubt poor? Well, when we renew our mind to the word of God, we are reproving to ourselves that his word is good, it's acceptable, it's perfect, and it's for us. We're transforming our mind. So as we transform our mind with scriptures, then we become more scripture rich and less we have less doubt in our lives. In Titus 2, in Titus 2, verse 1, it says, Speak the things which become sound doctrine. Wow. Speak the things which become sound doctrine. And it actually says, But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. So it means that this makes it very personal for us to speak what the Word of God says. I don't need Byron to speak for me. Now, he can agree with me. He can pray for me to have wisdom and revelation. 
He can even line up his declarations with what I'm saying. But it says, speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. So I'm going to want to speak the word of God so that it will be sound doctrine to me personally as Rhea, as well as a part of the body of Christ. Now, in 2 Timothy 4, 2 Timothy 4, verse 3, 2 Timothy 4 verse 3 says this, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Now, it sounds like right now, because there, there's, um, it just seems like any old doctrine will do, any old teaching will do. I'm actually going to turn over here to 2 Timothy really quickly. I'll find it here in a second. Second Timothy. Now, Second Timothy chapter three, the same one that talked about that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. In the very beginning of this chapter, we've covered this before. It says in chapter three, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. Gosh, this seems like just today, and this was a couple thousand years ago. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Listen, it keeps on going. It sounds like today. Traitors, petty, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. So in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3, he says, he says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And many times we're finding that not only out there among unbelievers, but we're finding it in pulpits, which is very, very sad that there's not a sound doctrine based on the truth, <coughs> excuse me, of God's word. Now, let's look at Titus chapter 1, verse 9. <coughs> excuse me. Okay. So it says here in Titus chapter 1, verse 9, it says, Holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince gainsayers. Okay? So what's happening is he is talking about leadership, okay, and qualifications of ministers. But those qualifications for ministers really should be how, uh, how we're qualified as well. <laughs> excuse me. And so he says that we need to hold fast uh, to the faithful word, okay, that we have been taught. Well, we need to know what the scriptures say, renew our mind to what the scriptures say, and allow that to transform us so that our identity is less and less of who we naturally are, and our identity becomes more and more like who Christ says that we are. And he lives inside of us. And then it says in Titus 1, it says that this man may be able by sound doctrine to exhort, which would be exhort believers, right? And then to convince those unbelievers, those gainsayers, or even unbelieving believers. And we've had a lot of people, we've been in contact over the years with a lot of people that are unbelieving believers. Now, in Luke 24, 44 through 49, these are some of Jesus' last words. And in verse 45, it says, Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. So, he wants us to understand the scriptures. If he did then, now he does now. And there's, this is such an awesome example in Joel chapter 3, verse 10, it's an example of how we make a declaration and use the power of our words of what we believe the scriptures say. 
like first Peter two twenty four that we're healed by the stripes of Jesus. You know, there are so many scriptures that tell us who we are in Christ. And that's why Philemon verse six tells us that our faith becomes effective by acknowledging everything that we have in Christ Jesus. And I love how this verse in Joel is. Joel chapter three, verse 10 says, let the weak say, I am strong. Some people will say, oh, well, isn't that lying? No, it's not lying. It's actually taking the truth of God's word above the truth or the facts that I'm living in at the moment. Let's say that I have not been feeling well. What do I say? Do I keep on saying, oh, I don't feel well, I don't feel well, I don't feel well? Or do I replace that with, you know, I may not feel well right now, but by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. And I am expecting to see the results of that in my body. You know, a lot of you hear me say, the well, get up. There's a time, if you're not feeling well, there's a time to rest, okay? Take care of your body. Make sure that you're doing everything that you need to. But also, there's those acts of faith. And I know I've mentioned this before. Um, And that's when my mom, when I was a little girl, whenever I would get sick or have a stomach ache even, she would feed me bean and bacon soup, Campbell's bean and bacon soup. And I don't know if it was the salt content. I don't know what it was, but it tasted so good. It didn't upset me. And I ended up getting better very quickly. So it was a funny thing. My kids grew up on Campbell's bean and bacon soup. And it is so good when you get the original Campbell's rather than an off-brand. And it's so funny because even to this day, if I am even sick to my stomach or even vomiting, Do you know what I do by faith? I get up and I eat some bean and bacon soup or I eat something else. What am I doing? I'm allowing my imagination, my fourth dimension of knowing that I am the healed of God and I'm walking that out by faith and I am changing the circumstances because I truly believe the well get up. I'm going to do an action that is the extreme opposite of what I am dealing with. So if I feel weak, the very best thing for me to do is to say, I am strong. Am I strong in and of myself? No, but I am strong because I have the strength of God in me. I have his love, his nature, his ability. I am identified with Christ. So the only way that I can do that is to be scripture rich and doubt poor. Love you guys. Hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And we will see you on Monday.